Welcome, everybody, to Hi Gluttony. I'm Gretchen. And I'm Becca. And today we are introducing (laughs) our mac and cheese episode. Modern mac and cheese recipe. That's right. I forgot Uh, it had modern in it. It's Yes, well, it's modern because, (laughs) wait. I'll tell you why in a minute. We're going to get through the whole title of the actual (laughs) recipe first. Okay. (laughs) Modern baked mac and cheese with cheddar and gruyere recipe from Serious Eat by Daniel Gritzer. Seems like that would be how it would be pronounced. This is a solid recipe with that I found to be easy. How did you find it, Becca? Agree. Pretty easy. I would say a world level one to two. I think the only thing that pushes it up into the two world two range is the fact that it's, you have an unusual ingredient that is really mm-hmm. not hard to find. <laughs> it's just unusual. <laughs> I suppose we should tell you what that is. <laughs> <laughs> Sodium citrate. Sodium citrate. Yes. And so this uh, was new to me. This was totally new to me. Okay. Well, I, I don't want you to believe that I like had some grand knowledge of this stuff. I mean, I found about it, found out about it, what, like this year or maybe last year. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you also learned about it recently. Yes. This is, this is a new thing for me. I bought mine on Amazon. So really easy. And, and then once you have it, you could make this mac and cheese all the time. Just as long as you have like two pounds of cheese around. Uh, <laughs> that's all you really need. Oh, well, I guess it's just that. And just a casual two pounds of cheese. Yeah, totally cash. <laughs> totally cash. <laughs> uh, that said, though, I actually did this twice once for Thanksgiving and then again with Becca a couple days later because I want to try it out before I did it although that's not always an issue because we keep doing things that I've never done before so (laughs) it makes it really easy to make a cheese sauce Uh, one of the main things to note though is that our sauce did not end up being as thick as the one in the pictures from the recipe mine ended up being quite thin Although once, because it does, the, the macaroni does absorb a certain amount of the water out of the sauce, this might not be a drawback necessarily, um, but it does make it a little hard to get the, a good coating on all of the noodles before you put it in the oven and kind of runs off the noodles a little bit. So. Right. I, I guess we should back up real quick and say, so this is, you make a cheese sauce, you make your noodles, you mix those together, and then you bake it. And one of the fun things is that you top it with panko breadcrumbs. And we'll talk about that in a second. But what Gretchen is saying is that once you mix that sauce you've made with the sodium citrate and it's water-based and then cheese, in this case, we used cheddar and gruyere, but I think it lists a ton of combinations. And I think almost any sort of shreddable cheese might work. But once you've made your sauce and you mix that with your cooked noodles, again, you pop that in the oven. And so Gretchen is saying that that water that you've made with the the sodium citrate and the cheese gets absorbed into the noodles as they're baking in the oven. Thank you for being an excellent Gretchen translator, Becca. (laughs) (laughs) Lots of practice. 10,000 hours. Was that Malcolm Gladwell or something? (laughs) Oh, I have no idea. (laughs) (laughs) i'm not intellectual don't ask me questions like that (laughs) yeah it didn't look like the pictures that was kind of a slight disappointment it obviously tasted amazing but it did not look like that thick creamy cheesy sauce that i saw in the photo now uh, when if you go to the recipe on serious seeds you will find people that say that And they got around that by either like adding more cheese or starting with, and they've like started with milk, which I would be curious to try. It's a flexible recipe. Uh, There were a couple of people that said that their sauce broke, which I think we get into in the episode, but Mm -hmm. is when the fat starts to separate from the other parts of the cheese. And so then you get kind of an oily, greasy mess. And the first time I made it, I didn't have that problem. But the second time I made it, I did kind of run into that territory 
just be aware of that as this may be more finicky recipe than I'm thinking. With like with anything, there is a potential to kind of overthink it, but it's really pretty straightforward. And just trying to find that combination of what sauce thickness you want. Again, fucking delicious mac and cheese. Yeah. Just not what I had envisioned of what it would be. So we want to set, we want to set realistic expectations here for you. It's going to be amazing. If you want it to be thicker, maybe try milk, maybe try adding a little bit more cheese, something like that. I just had a really good idea. When you go to add your Gruyere, add some sour cream too at the same time, which will get like add some body, but then you'll all get that nice sourness out of it. That could be something to try too. It's really, you that know, could be delicious. Yeah. I really like that idea. I'm like, I'm going to go to the kitchen right now and make some just like that. <laughs> what do you think about a little bit of buttermilk? <gasps> That's a good idea too. Or starting so with fatty. buttermilk. Yeah. See, lots of ideas. You can well, play now with we, it. Yeah. Make it. <laughs> yeah, now we have more things to try. <laughs> exactly. One of the coolest things we talked about was we, I don't know, maybe we'll have to do a whole episode on this alone but we talk about panko breadcrumbs and how they're made and it is so fascinating and if you knew about this that's amazing if you didn't know about this get ready to just be have your surprise it's just not really off. yeah we're gonna leave that as a surprise yeah I'm not even not gonna tell socks. you we talk that's about, right we talk it's about a lot really fun so <laughs> yeah, yeah we really do fun. we're still yeah. excited about it We are. I'm like, my brain, my brain is broken. I guess the one other comment I'd want to make on this is that the recipe says to cook it in the oven on the top rack. And I did that and it ended up browning a little too quickly for me. And I moved it to the middle after about 10 minutes, but ultimately I still think it was, it ended up being too brown. And so I wish I had put some foil on it. Something to be mindful of, just keeping an eye on how much your breadcrumbs are browning. And, and if they start to brown too quick, you, you could always cover it with tinfoil. And I'd really just like slide it on top of the casserole and not fasten it on just so wrap that you're it. deflecting. Yeah, don't wrap it. You <clears throat> want it to be like, because you want steam to escape so your top stays crispy, but that so that you can deflect some of the heat off the top if it's too brown something you can do as well. I did want to mention though, that uh, I used an immersion blender. (laughs) My sauce got basically turned, had like several inches of foam on the top. Uh, The first time I thought maybe I was using too shallow of a pan and whipping too much air in, but it did it the second time in a smaller pan. And I almost made a mess on my counter or on my stove. If you're using the immersion blender, be prepared for some foam. Otherwise, I think I might want to try whisking it by hand versus using the immersion blender and see if maybe my use of the immersion blender might have contributed to the sauce uh, breaking a little bit that second time. Further research is required. Got it. And I did use a whisk. We also questioned whether or not a whisk or the immersion blender was responsible for the thinness but we both ended up with kind of the same consistency. Ultimately, we didn't think it made a huge difference in terms of the result, but it may, like Gretchen is saying, make a difference in whether or not your sauce breaks. Just some things to consider. And plus, because of the way the sodium citrate works, it's actually like super easy to whisk the, the cheese in. So don't be afraid to do it by hand because it's not hard. It, you know, it truly- It's one of the easiest- it's so easy. It, it does. It melts super quickly. And it's really one of the easiest, you know, cheese sauces I've ever made. You don't have to do a roux. You don't have to melt anything first. You just have to shred a shitload of cheese, get some water boiling and dissolve your sodium citrate. It's impressively smooth <laughs> for it's the sauce smooth. side. Yeah. <laughs> it's impressively smooth. Let us know what you think. Let us know how your sauce turns out. Remember to follow us on Instagram at High Gluttony. Check out our YouTube. And um, we always have our recipe and our thoughts on the recipes on the website, which is highgluttony.com. So check us out in all those places. You can email us at highgluttony at highgluttony.com. Oh, have you checked the email in a while? Nope. I was thinking that today. Mm I don't know why I'm like afraid to check that email. <laughs> I know nothing's going to be in there. Anyway, yeah, email us. 
email us. We promise to answer someday. Just, yeah. <laughs> we'll look at it. I, I promise. promise at some point I will yeah. <laughs> do whatever I need to do. It just keeps logging out on my computer. It's not easy. And I deal with email all day long yeah. and I don't like doing it afterwards. So Hey, if, totally. if you guys give us money, because at some point we'll start a Patreon, probably not by the time this is up, we will be starting a Patreon and you could give us money and we might be able to hire people to do these things for us. <laughs> Just throwing it out there. Yeah. If you're enjoying this, think about giving us some money. Think about helping us figure out how to make some money from this podcast. <laughs> Thanks. Yay. Enjoy this episode about this uh, really interesting mac and cheese. Happy cooking, everybody. Jump on in. Let's do this. So we are on our mac and cheese with our special ingredients. That would be sodium citrate. I don't know if you can see my beautiful board over here. It's very... I, I can see it. I can't distinguish all of the letters. Well, kind of I can. It feels like a, an eye test. Let me see. <laughs> <laughs> the computer adds distance, I think. So yes, we have lots of sodium citrate facts to go over. I did a fair amount of re research on this assisted by my dad. And I wrote out some recipe notes because after I started reading the comments, I don't know, it was like last night or two nights ago on the recipe. And like everybody was saying, oh, the sauce is thin and the sauce is thin. And I was like, yeah, my sauce was really thin, but I thought it was sort of supposed to be that way. So, um, and here I am jumping right into the middle where we're not supposed to go. What we're supposed to do is go over, okay, we're making mac and cheese. Bam citrate. Yay. <laughs> More fun stuff to come about that later. Right, because we're not just making mac and cheese. Right. We're making the high gluttony mac and cheese. Right. Well, technically, we're making serious eat mac and cheese. <laughs> right. On high gluttony, which we will then add the high gluttony elements to this in a little bit. But that'll come towards the end. We can discuss my alternate topping options and go. Yes, I know. I, I've been thinking about this. I have some very good ideas for this whole situation. <laughs> I'm excited. Let's start with the basics. Okay. Uh, this is going to go in a 9 by 13 inch baking dish. Your total cook time says an hour and 30 minutes. I'm going to say today, realistically, it's going to take us at least two hours. But We'll yeah. let you know. <laughs> very focused. You could probably do it in an hour and 30 minutes, but um, that's not me. It takes a long time to grate this cheese. Uh, yeah. If you, so we actually, I do have mine grated as well because you said so much grating. And I was like, I guess I bet that means I better grate mine now because she clearly has already done. Her. Uh, so you you end up with two pounds of, of cheese in this, which I thought was like, you have one pound of uncooked pasta and two pounds of cheese. I was like, hey, this is a ratio I can get behind as far as cheese to pasta goes. Seriously. <laughs> I took a picture because the piles just seem astronomical. I was like, we have to document how much shredded cheese this is. <laughs> oh my God. So I did my Gruyere and then realized that it sort of stacked up with the grater and like it was standing in a really cool way. So I took a picture of that. And then I was like, I bet if I grate it all my cheddar at once in box grater and then took it off and be kick ass. Well, I only got through a pound and then it was stuck inside the grater because it was too much cheese. <laughs> too much. So I don't recommend doing that. That's not a good idea because then you end up with kind of like clumps of cheese again. I had to like basically like re-separate the cheese again. <laughs> and then the half a pound I separately. I have a question about the uh, baking dish which is that I have a glass one or a metal one or whatever. Um, I think in the picture on the recipe, it was a ceramic dish. And I'm just, will it make a difference if I put it in one or the other of those pans? The I feel like the glass might make a difference. The glass, so yeah. So here, here comes my thought process on, on metal versus glass. So we can, we can get into this a little bit right now. So I think on, and maybe it was the last episode where we were making the Buckeyes and I was talking about how we were doing the chocolate 
And then I kind of like the glass bowl. Like, was that episode or was it the episode before that? Glass? Oh, it was at some point. Potatoes. We definitely talked about it. Like, we used a glass oh. bowl because the glass bowl is going to hold heat longer than a metal, a thinner metal. So it's like, it's basically the same thought, but you're talking about heating something up versus like just keeping something warm. So you're. Uh, metal pan's going to heat up more. So you might end up with maybe some crispy edges around the outside. So I'm not going to say it's a bad thing or undesirable. Uh, I think most people would make this in a glass dish or ceramic or something like that. But I don't know that you have to follow that really. What are you using? I, I have a pirate, but I'm using my pirate. So glass. Okay. Um, okay. Thank you for that lesson. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> glass it is as i said don't know that for sure i actually only ever made macaroni and cheese i think in glass dishes i've never tried to make it in a metal one it kind of makes me want to try it but also i think i'll just do glass i know all right i was gonna say so i have a bone to pick with this recipe too but we'll get there in a minute we're gonna talk okay our ingredients. Thank you. Sorry, I track uh, off track this. I don't think it really was off track because we were just kind of commenting on the cheese and stuff. So I think we're okay. <laughs> okay, moving on. So here are our ingredients. The list starts with kosher salt, one pound of elbow back macaroni, five tablespoons of unsalted butter divided, four teaspoons of sodium citrate, uh, one and a half pounds of grated sharp cheddar cheese, one teaspoon of red of sorry, hot sauce, but they say such as Frank's Red Hot, which I think most people are familiar with. Uh, one, a half a teaspoon of mustard powder. So that's a half a teaspoon of mustard powder. Because I think it sounded a bit like I said one and a half teaspoons of mustard powder before. <laughs> a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder, a half pound of grated gruyere, and finish off one cup of panko breadcrumbs. They also have gram measurements and ounce measurements if you want those things but that's pretty much i don't know that pretty much covers it pretty much covers it so as far as method goes you want your oven at 400 degrees and you're gonna cook your pasta right the details in the recipe are more descriptive <laughs> i'm gonna link to it in the blog post about this episode now you're gonna undercook your pasta this is important uh because you're gonna bake it later it needs to be not quite done so you want it really al dente or to what is that to the teeth or something like that and then drain and then put in a large mixing bowl and toss with two tablespoons of butter until the butter is melted and the noodle, noodle, noodles are coated first time i did this i actually used more butter than that <laughs> because i was like i don't feel like my noodles are adequately covered now i did use a different shaped pasta than a traditional macaroni noodle which i'm using today since this is our real run through and that was my fancy thanksgiving run through <laughs> you call it running through thanksgiving and run through yeah a marathon sprint mm -hmm. so we'll see if two two tablespoons maybe works better for macaroni versus the, the pasta i used before but i don't feel like that's really gonna make that big of a difference but i don't know sure so then did did you use the other did you only use the other three tablespoons later yeah or did you add more okay so well, actually, just a little more in the beginning thanksgiving so let's get a little bit into what i did on thanksgiving while our pasta cooks so i had sworn that i had panko breadcrumbs here okay and go to locate them on thanksgiving i cannot for the life of me find them and like i can barely okay. picture exactly like the container they're in and the bag that they came in that's in the container I'm like, I know I have this. And I spent ages looking for them. Cannot find them. <laughs> so luckily I'd gotten like a sun basket meal a week or so ago that came with some like fried shallots <laughs> on top instead of the panko bread crumb. <laughs> Good idea. Yeah. So I do want to make a, make a batch of this at some point with a like by making fried shallots and then putting those as the topping or make a mix of fried shallot. Uh, that sounds really good. Yeah, it was very tasty. And then the next day I ordered more panko. And then guess what? Today, today, I find the other panko bread crumbs. Of course. Of course. We were just talking about this on the last episode too, where we like f can't find something. And so you buy two of it and then you find four. Right. <laughs> Well, I guess the good news is, is that when I smelled the breadcrumbs, they were pretty old. So I was like, okay, ah. not that disappointing. So then I did end up making the panko for the second night when I took it to a work thing. 
And that was you did the breadcrumbs. Yeah. So the breadcrumbs are really good. That's what I'm doing this time. And then I am going to put safe black truffles over the top. (laughs) Yeah, you are. Bought a black truffle for uh, for Thanksgiving. So now I got to use it for stuff. Yeah. Now you have to use it. Uh, I have two questions. One is how long are you cooking your pasta? My instructions say five minutes total. So I guess I'm only doing it for three. So this is part of one of my my big you got to undercook your pasta and use your mouth to figure it out. So I would say yes, at three minutes. I didn't even read the back of my bag. Hold on. I bought two bags because I thought I was going to double this. And, and then I realized that no, I no longer need to be doubling things. This says six minutes. So yeah, after about three six. minutes, I would start tasting it to see what it feels like. Okay. Three minutes. Okay. Pasta's in. And then my second question is, what is the difference between panko breadcrumbs and other re- regular breadcrumbs? So regular breadcrumbs are, sorry, I'm just looking at these. I really don't know. It has to do with how they're created. Okay. Because panko is Japanese style? Yeah. Okay. But I wish I had a better answer than that. So hold on a second. Okay. Well, I guess we're going to the Wikipedia thing about it. <laughs> <laughs> I love Wikipedia. I try to donate to them every year. I did this year for the first time because I was like, I got to stop using this if I'm not donating. So they're like, we only have like 50 employees. And I'm like, what? How? (laughs) This is fascinating. So panko is made from bread baked by electrical current, which yields a bread without a crust. And then grinding the bread into fine slivers of crumbs. It has a crisper, what? airier texture than most types of breading found in Western cuisine and resists absorbing oil and grease when fried, resulting in a lighter coating. An electric coil? An electric current. Oh, current. Yeah. Right, right. Coil's not that weird. I don't understand. Just stick it in there? Hang on a second. All right. I've got 30 seconds left before I got to start tasting. Okay. Then I will taste it the same. Panko, the electric breadcrumb. <laughs> this unique method, this comes from Upper Crust Enterprises Incorporated. So this unique method was developed during World War II when Japan was fighting Russia out of necessity to cook bread without heated oven. How does this even work? I keep picturing that Bob's Burgers, the Topsy one, where Louise <laughs> gets, <laughs> she like electrocutes Tina. <laughs> I mean, kind um, Okay, hang on. I think there might be a YouTube video. Okay, great. I think my noodles are almost done. Really, really ready to dive down a whole hole. Yeah, I think mine's basically ready as well. Okay. Dude, the oven is 86 feet long. Feet? 86 feet. So it is kind of like an oven. Oh, this music is amazing. You're going to have to watch this video at some point. Okay, send me the link. I've rinsed my macaroni. Okay. And I'm now mixing with two tablespoons of butter. Sorry, I got all distracted by watching the crazy panko oven thing. No, totally. We'll have to come back to that. I was just like, ah, my noodles. Yeah, I neglected my noodles. I'm trying not to make 8 million dishes again today. So I just put mine back in my pot. And now I'm going to toss it with my butter. Ah, got it. What noodles did you use for Thanksgiving? I use these cute little things. I'm going to say Pipe Regate, maybe. Cool. So they're basically like a little shell. Like I was like, it's not too far off the macaroni uh, there. Spectrum, yeah. Yeah, it's on the macaroni spectrum. Just like a significantly bigger hole. And it made it made amazing mac and cheese. So next. Okay. Tossing okay. Butter. Well, so did you end up doing, did, did you, end, are you doing two tablespoons or do you think you'll need more for this, this time? Uh, I could do more, but they also seem to be decently coated. So yeah, they have a, a nice light buttery sheen to them. Perfect. I'm going to go with it. Okay. And then we set that aside. Oh, I like how I actually looked at the recipe, set the oven to four, thought I set the oven to 400 and ended up only setting it. <sighs> oh, <no. laughs> Our next next step, which I guess we should read, because I think we only really read the first step, which got us through coating the pasta. Uh, mm-hmm. In a large saucepan, bring three cups of water to a simmer. Uh, whisk in your sodium citrate until fully dissolved. While maintaining a gentle simmer, add cheddar cheese in salt, small increments using an immersion blender to incorporate it completely into the sauce before the next addition. When all the cheese is added and the sauce is smooth and glossy, 
Blend in the hot sauce, mustard powder, garlic powder, season, season with salt if just. So here's my gripe with this recipe. I read the article that's associated with it as well. Okay, so in here, it very clearly says to use an immersion blender on the fucking article that goes with this recipe. The pictures clearly show them using a whisk. No immersion blender in sight. They say whisk or immersion blender. So one thing that I did find using the immersion blender... And this is what a lot of people said is that the sauce was thin. And so I, who had not read the article where I made the recipe the other day, um, just assumed it was supposed to be thin because you're it's absorb, being absorbed by the pasta. But the pictures in the article are clearly of like a thick, gooey sauce. Like, so I'm not sure how to handle that because mine definitely was a thinner sauce than advertised. So I'm going to be really interested to see how this run through goes, because I'm also wondering if I like ended up not putting as much cheese in or what other things might have gone in there. Now, I don't know if that doesn't sound like me to not put in some other factor. Yeah, more than enough cheese, because other people were like, we added a ton more cheese. And to get it to the right consistency, someone did point out like maybe they were using if you use pre shredded cheese, they do put something on the cheese usually to keep it from caking. So there is a possibility of that interacting. Uh, One thing that I did the first run around that may have factored in was that I used the same pot that I cooked my pasta in and I didn't wash it. I just didn't think it was relevant. Um, But it also ended up with the water being too low. So when I was using the immersion blender, basically I couldn't really see the sauce as well because it made a lot of foam. (laughs) So like there was like a whole foam over the top of it. So, (laughs) you know, we'll see if it goes the same today, but those, that was my, my first run through had those. So I have those notes from that run through. Hang on. I feel like I'd rather do a whisk. If the article says either or, I think I'd prefer to do a whisk. And see, and now I, because I'm wondering if doing it that way ends up with that thicker sauce. And if you're using an immersion blender, if that not as good, you know, doesn't work as well. Uh huh. So, right. And other people were like saying that you, that they were having issues with like the sauce splitting. I didn't have that problem the first run through. So um, it was just thin. And, but then it was really great once it was baked it like you wouldn't have known the sauce too that was then when you baked it so i don't know and yeah but it I, wasn't exactly what the picture prompt well the good news is i didn't see the picture before i did it so i didn't know it was supposed to like they were advertising like <laughs> thick sauce so i wasn't disappointed i was just like oh this is i wouldn't have thought it'd be so thin but hey it's thin all right but who knew so yeah, I don't know. I had no expectation. Really. All right. Well, I'm going to try with. Okay. I think I'm going to stick with the immersion blender because I want to see if number one, our pan where I'm hopefully not getting a whole layer of foam on the top makes a difference or, you know, so yeah, I was tempted to do a whisk as well. Um, but I, just because I want to see what happens, I'm going to, I'm going to go with the, the immersion blender again, just because I've done it that way once. And so I feel like I need to do it. Repeat. I need to repeat the experiment. Yeah. All right. So three cups of water. Yeah. Three cups of water. I've been doing ring fit again. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. No, I actually <laughs> talked to you about, I finished the main quest in the DLC of um, Zelda. <gasps> And you get a motorcycle and it's so fucking cool. Fun. Yeah. But yeah, no, I've, I've been really enjoying the ring fit and I'm, it's interesting because the second, this new like extended version of the world that you get to after you beat the first set of worlds, I guess, um, <laughs> like they're still like giving you things like there are new ingredients that are coming up, new stones that are coming up. I'm like, this is awesome. I love it. Super cool. Mm-hmm. No, so I, 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 I forgot how rewarding it can be to play. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I, um, yeah, I was thinking, I was like, I really need you to get back into it so we could talk about it. <laughs> I know. It's so funny because the other day I said to James, Gretchen finished Ring Fit and like we've had it as long as she has pretty much. And she's finished it and we both stopped like in March and I was like oh my god (laughs) like we could have been exercising for like nine fucking months and I was doing yoga those days but like 
nothing like cardio or like yeah I mean yeah I, I was sweating during yoga but not in the same way <laughs> it's the same. I I just really like I got I think I got through it a lot faster because I turned on the knee assist though too. Mm. And so like not having to do all the running really helped me. Totally. But yeah, I was really excited when I finished the, um, the, the Zelda DLC. Cause I was like, huh, I wonder what you get. Cause it's kind of like a really interesting, like you get to elevate all your, um, Chica, like sensor, those things, you know, like, Oh, you're like scale. tablet thing. Yeah. Cool. And, and Nifty is Grace and all those things. Those like, what do you call those tools you use? Yeah. I do have my, just to get back to the macaroni and cheese before we <laughs> this like total grab full of um, Zelda and Zelda. I'm, I'm working on heating up my water to add my sodium citrate to. Same. Just to get back to so that <laughs> what we're actually doing. Making sure that you are also on the same spot where I'm like, I want to make sure we're at least moving forward with the recipe. Totally. <laughs> but yeah, I really like the, the quests in the DLC pack for Zelda. It's very cool. And it took me a long time to get through those because I've been doing this podcast. So I haven't had as much time to play video games. I hear you. <laughs> like, where did all my time go? I know. No, it went <laughs> podcast. That's where it went. I know. Yeah. It. And so, yeah, now, so I'm, I'm about to go in and finally, because I re I did, I started a new Zelda game so that I could start from the beginning. Um, mm -hmm. And so I haven't defeated Ganon yet in that one. And so I'm, I'm about to go do the, the, you know, end, end all fight. The big one. <laughs> the big one. The boss, boss. Um, but yeah. Uh, one second. Do you have another console or just the Switch? Just the switch, because I um I was actually gonna ask you because I know that game that you like Persona Five. Yeah, I was just I was just looking it up. <laughs> I that's why I was like, just a second. I looked up to see if it was on Switch, and then I was like, do you have anything else? No, um, it might be on Switch soon though. But it's my most favorite game to play. Yeah, I'm I'm sort of of course that like last night I was looking and. Two nights ago, I was looking at different games. I was like, "What? When do you think you're gonna have time, like, to play another video game? Like, you don't even play the one <laughs> now." That's true. That's true. Uh, <laughs> We're just saying we don't have time. I'm like, "Do you want a new video game? Do you want to buy a whole new console to play one video game?" <laughs> I'm definitely not doing that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was, I was wondering. So, what what do you play that on? Uh, a P PlayStation Four. Okay. I mean, because I could always just get a refurbished one. I really felt like it, but that's true. My water is still simmering. Okay, my mine's boiling. I'm gonna take the temperature down, and I just put my sodium citrate in and whisked it. But I've decided just to put the immersion blender in there to whisk it until it's dissolved. Because if I'm going to use blender, I'm going to use the immersion blender. And uh, mm -hmm. now I'm hoping that this will fit in this pot. All right, here I go. I'm adding my cheese. All right. Well, the first of a pound and a half of cheese going in. Oh, I'm still getting a lot of foam. Okay. Turn it up a little bit. Uh, I've got a pound in here now. I'm going to stir my heat out a little bit. Yeah, I'm still, I've got a ton of foam on the top of mine. I can't even see this up again. So, so same thing. Same thing as was happening before. So clearly having a dirty pot was not necessarily the cause of that little problem. Mm -hmm. uh, Did you just add like a handful at a time of the cheese? Very, very slowly. And I think uh -huh. I really like this fucking foam, fucking foam. I can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> That's so frustrating. Fucking frustrating foam. And I can't, like, I'm like, how full is this? Is it, is it all foam? Is it mostly foam? Is it not at all foam? I don't know what's happening. Right. Yeah, it feels like at this point in the recipe, since it's happened to you twice, they should say, like, expect foam. Sauce may be thin. Or some sort of expectation setting language. So you're, and you're, are you, you're still waiting for boiling? I'm still waiting. I should have started mine earlier, but the electric takes so long and I don't want to overheat it and then not be able to cool it back down. I'll be interested to see how you're uh, doing it with the whisk goes versus my blender. Because I do almost feel like I prefer to use a whisk. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. 
especially when there's so much foam on the top here. I have no idea what's really happening. And I'm sort of like crumbling my cheese too when I'm adding it. Um, now my thumb's giving me problems. It doesn't want to hold that button that long. All right, I'm getting. Oh, a, I bet. My so maybe I didn't have enough cheese the last time. My sauce looks thicker this time. Okay. And I'm almost done adding my cheese. Okay. <laughs> and I'm throwing <laughs> water and cheese sauce all over my stove. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> it's still quite thin. So thicker than, thicker than when the, you made it for Thanksgiving, but thinner, thin still. Still very thin. Yeah, still thinner than their their photo representation. <laughs> Definitely getting a lot more cheese off stove this time too. Because <laughs> the smaller pan. Uh, yeah, yeah. I need it. I need <laughs> this for a while, but I haven't really been able to justify it. I was like, I need something between my my large pot and this little soft pot that I use. I need something in, be- in between, but I don't really have anything in between there. So, um, mm-hmm. and my hot sauce, I'm going to go ahead and turn off my heat and I'm going to add a little more hot sauce uh, than they call for. What kind of hot sauce are you using? Uh, I have crystal. That's my preferred one. Mm, go to my, my go to. I need a half mm-hmm. of mustard, half teaspoon of mustard and a quarter of. Okay. Yeah. Still pretty thin. All right. Now I'm going to add to my noodles. I think I think I'm seeing some of what maybe some people were calling the sauce being split. Oh, that's not. And that means like your cheese is separating from what? your water or something? Yeah. So I'm wondering, now I'm just whisking it a little bit, because I'm thinking maybe my cheese isn't really as fully incorporated as I thought. So I'm going to give mm-hmm. it a mm-hmm. Because mine, it doesn't necessarily look split. I'm just wondering, I'm going to tell you a story about cooking school. Um, so I, I, okay. it, I was dating this guy that I worked with and we were both in culinary school. I think I was, must've been in the bachelor's program at the time. And he was making aioli, which is a pretty basic thing. Like one of the first things you learn how to do in culinary school is making an aioli. Do you use mayonnaise or do you make your own no, everything you, from scratch? From scratch. So using egg yolks with, um, with, um, like a little bit of mustard and some acid, whatever type of acid you want, you know, lemon juice. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so he starts making this aioli and I see him start it and then back by a little bit later and he's still working on the same aioli, but he's adding more and more egg yolk. And I'm like, what are you doing? Oh, okay. He's like, it didn't work. <laughs> and I was like, I look at it. And it actually wasn't. He it wasn't even done. And he just started adding more and more egg yolks. But here's the thing about how you do that um, and why this is sort of relevant to what we're doing, because egg yolks work as an emulsifier. <laughs> and the sodium citrate in this acts as an emulsifier. It's emulsifying your cheese into the water. So that's that's what's going on there. Okay. And so basically what he is, you have to do with an, an aioli, if you have a broken aioli, you need to take the aioli and he was making it in a food processor. So that's, it's usually you make it with a whisk if you're just making a little bit, but you can do a food processor. So now he's added so many egg yolks. We ended up using like, cause you need like one egg yolk to one cup of oil. And so he had <sighs> like 12 egg yolks in there. And I was like, you have to, you're going to have to add more oil. Also, you're doing this wrong. So <laughs> start with like two new egg yolks and then you have to slowly add in what the broken part uh, because otherwise it doesn't actually maybe we didn't have to dump it out i just said no no stop what you're doing like add more oil <laughs> broken oh. start done and he, he had put so many egg yolks in there it ended up being like this huge batch of aioli like we had it for like weeks oh my god 12 cups of olive oil to make up for the yeah. Egg yolks. For, for how many egg yolks he put in. I'm just like, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, man. All right. So I've gone now. I've added my pasta to my sauce. Okay. And I mean, it does look a little thin. Like, it's sort of thin, but it looks good. I mean, like, it's nice and cheesy. Mm. Good. It's all that matters. Yeah. So I'm just wondering if maybe some people hadn't mixed theirs well enough. And so they thought it was broken, but it wasn't. <laughs> Do you think it was necessary for you to finish it with a whisk? Maybe. Maybe. Oh, no. I forgot to add my Gruyere. Oops. 
I guess we have to talk through the next step. Yeah. <laughs> I'm my water still hasn't totally simmered. <laughs> All right. So after you simmer and then you stir in your sodium citrate. All I'm doing now is sprinkling the Gruyere over the top and then folding it in to the cheese. So uh, it'll be in there. It just uh, may not quite be as uniform as I would have maybe wanted, but not a problem. That's kind of nice. I love a pop of Gruyere. And that's sort of why they didn't add it into the sauce itself is they wanted to have that like intact stringy, like these bites of little stringy cheese in there, which I do have. Mm. They nailed that part of it. That's great. So yeah, once you blend in your sauce in, adding your cheese in small additions, you take it off the heat, add it to the noodles, and then uh, you the proper way to do it is add the gruyere first, then put it in, out, out in your pan. And then uh, that, that's uh, basically you're almost ready to go in the oven at this point. But we're going to wait. I'm going to walk Becca through until she catches up. Out of the ketchup. Not everybody can have the power of oil like me. No, it's true. This is really good. <laughs> yum, 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 yum. Okay, I'm adding my sodium citrate. Yay. <laughs> and you're, and so you are going to, you're whisking. You're going to whisk your cheese in. Okay, I see here. Yep, you're starting. I'm, yep. I'm commenting on what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, let everybody know for me. Yeah, so Becca's adding her first handful of cheese. Yay, <laughs> finally. <laughs> I just comment on every handful that you put in and do this for like the next five minutes. Yeah, because there's so much cheese. <laughs> so much cheese. All right. Do you have, so what What else can you tell me about sodium citrate? I'm so glad you asked, Becca, because I was just about to start telling you all the <laughs> random facts I have for you about sodium citrate. All right. Yay. So, hey, random fact. <laughs> often referred to as sour salt and that's because it is one of the salts that is in citric acid there's a relationship there but when you, it's it's a very common additive for food it works as a stabilizer so sort of similar to our emulsifying effect we're getting from our that we're doing here in the, the mac and cheese and is a ph buffer for a wide range of foods i'm gonna have to do a little more research on pH buffers. So I'm not exactly sure yeah. unless my dad's paying attention and wants to chime in. pH buffer? <laughs> okay. Hold, it basically holds the acidity where it is. So that's what Because like the cheese is really acidic or something? Well, yeah, it, it works with the, you know, the la lactic acid in the cheese and okay. so I didn't get far down into the chemistry on this. Sure. From, it's also found in club soda. So our, my new working theory is that that's why they tell you like it because it's the way it works it might help clean things so that's why everybody tells you put club soda on stuff oh this cool weird assumption that has no basis in fact whatsoever <laughs> and so as I, I mentioned in this recipe it acts as an emulsifier and because i just made a buttload of caramel the other day i wish i would have known this if you add it to caramel it helps prevent the sucrose from crystallizing oh yeah so those are my weird random facts about sodium citrate cool i think i saw that it's in american cheese or you put that in the notes i did yeah it's so it's it's because we could go down the whole thing of well american cheese isn't really cheese but maybe we won't go there right but that okay. <laughs> melt like american cheese melts so easily and is so smooth and is clearly you know a superior cheese product for some applications so mm -hmm. and that's because of sodium citrate yeah. Okay. Like, well, you managed to take your pile down quite quick. Okay. So how is, yeah. it, is it thin? Is it thick? Mine's also very thin. No, it's thin. I do have a little bit of foam on top, but nothing probably like I can still see everything, but it's pretty thin. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that, you know, that a large part of that is because you're putting it in with the pasta that is not fully cooked. So that little bit of extra moisture mm -hmm. going into the cheese or into the pasta. And so that sure. you don't necessarily need it to be as thick as the pictures on the article. I mean, that looks better. Okay. I think... <laughs> I mean, like it, this turned out so well that I can't imagine that. Oh, well, um, kind of ran out of topping. Uh, 
I think that sort of, it turned out so well. Yeah. I mean, it was like, it right. needs to be sick. But yeah, some people were talking about how they prefer <clears throat> a bechamel base, which is the sort of generally accepted way to do it. This would be a relatively, well, they called it a modern big mac and cheese. So I guess that's because they're using some sort of chemical to do what the bechamel sauce does. Do you know about talk to, can you Please talk to me about it. <laughs> Hold on. I'm going to go find a chair. I'm tired of standing. Cheese is ready to go in the oven. So I'm going to sit. Anyway, so bechamel sauce is uh, usually what you do is you make a roux. So that's a mixture of butter and flour that you cook into like a paste. With most bechamels, those are milk based. So you, I did see other people were doing this with milk versus doing it with water, which I just don't, you know, it's like, I don't know. I, I, I'll have to try that variant as well at some point. But I mean, this turned out so great the first time. I'm like, I don't know that I really want to fuck with it. <laughs> Good recipe. That's a lot of dairy too. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of dairy. It, it, to me, it, like it's very heavy yeah but yeah so like the guy daniel that wrote the article he was saying that he actually prefers the bechamel type and i was like why like you've got to make a roux which is things are hard whereas i think this recipe is a world level two only because you have to find this like weird ingredient so it's not really that hard to find mine's actually thickening up a lot now that i'm adding the gruyere yeah and now you gotta put it in pan all right You've added it to your macaroni. That's what it looks like. Yeah. All mixed in. The Gruyere's in. Oh, Oh my God. This looks so good. Did you add any extra salt? I don't think I need to. Uh, No, I have not. It does say to put it on the top. So I was just going to sprinkle over the top before I put it in the oven. I I don't have my butter melted. Oh, did it say butter was supposed to be melted? Okay. Well, let me talk through step four. Add panko to a small mixing bowl, melt remaining three tablespoons butter, then add two panko, mix until evenly coated, season with salt, scatter over the top, put on the bottom of your oven, put on the top, sorry, the top rack of your oven until browned and bubbling. I just did softened butter and mixed it with my panko. Okay. Because I did not read that part. (laughs) But it popping looked really nice uh, on the last time. So I don't know. I think I'll melt mine just for to see what what happens convenience yeah it's pretty softened so it's not going to take that long but yeah i don't think it really needs much more salt i agree this the cheese is so salty yeah it's so good i know it's really good i'm very i i think this is a great recipe and i think it's relatively easy now let's see if i i think i've talked all through the ideas that i wanted to hit so far okay yeah okay all right just mixing my butter and my breadcrumbs uh, from this angle, you can see how much of a mess I made of my dough. <laughs> cheese, mac and cheese. I keep thinking about how panko is made with an electric current. I know. <laughs> like somebody needs to show me a video of that. Yeah. How does, we got to do some more research. Maybe we have to do a episode on pan, panko. <laughs> okay. I think I'm finally ready to go in the oven. Okay. <laughs> okay. 45 minutes. All right. 45 minutes. And we go on the top rack. I gotta move my rack. <laughs> right. Okay. Timer set. Okay. Let's take a quick break. I'm gonna keep looking for panko. But, uh... Okay, cool. <laughs> All right. I'll see you in a second. <laughs> Hi. Hi. All right. I also smoked. I don't know if you need to or not. Oh, my dad left, so I know I really can. Um, okay, good. Need to, no, but can. Right, <laughs> but want to. <laughs> Very interesting video of a guy that's thoroughly explaining how to bake bread with the uh, electrical current. Uh, oh, cool. I, What'd you, so how do, how do you do it? <laughs> well, he, he was just showing that... I guess there, there's like a myth out there that it was originally developed by people trying to cook bread using in the tanks during World War II. So now I can stumble down this little scientific path that I found. So it's not that you cook the bread with the electricity, you use the electrical resistance in the bread. I can, I've not done with the video. It's like 20 minutes. <laughs> left, so. Okay. But so far, he, he was doing a direct current, which is how a batter, a, a, a tank battery would work, uh, and basically proved that if you're trying to do that, you end up with horrifically like dark brown bread on one side that not it's not burnt, but it's like not tasty, and then you end the other side ends up green for some reason. He was like, so clearly he can say that was definitely not how that came around. <laughs> yeah, it's, not the origin story. <laughs> 
it's alternating current for as much as I know about electricity. So, right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he was set. He was actually just getting set up to do a test test on it. I don't. He's not turned it on yet. Okay. Oh, he's gonna let it sit in there for an hour and then he's gonna cook it at thirty. Start cooking it at thirty volt. Proofed it. <laughs> I'm just going to do commentary for you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, come on, guy. Let's go. Why don't you... Yeah. Oh, he's got one of these fancy thermometers. So anyway, if you want to watch this later, you get the idea. Uh, yeah. He, he's saying it, it was a good first attempt, but not quite. He did, he wasn't getting... He hasn't made panko bread yet, so... Got it. Um, I want to see just what a panko loaf looks like then before it's crumbed up. Hang on. That I did see. That was on one of the ones that I was checking earlier. Down here. They're done on like these huge wheels, basically. Anyway, you can Google it. I might have to move mine. I might have to move my rack a little lower. The top of mine is already starting to get pretty brown. Oh, then yes, probably. Yeah. I, okay. Because mine's been in there 15 minutes. Yeah, about 15. Mine's already browning too. Ugh. It's uh, I'm about to have a mess. Oh no! And all my it's not gonna be 100 percent effective, but should at least sort of help. Yeah, my mine looks like it's about to go out of the pan, but it it is starting to brown on top too. So I moved mine to the middle rack because I, I don't know, I might I might have even almost have to put foil on it. I don't want to. It's so crispy already. Got brown already? Yeah, I'll take a picture. Because yeah, mine's starting to brown a little bit, but I can hear yours. I know it's sizzling. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, just keep an eye on it. I think it'll be okay. Yeah, okay. I'm like Great British Baking. Just sit in front of it. Right. Oh, we have six minutes. Wow. How are your hands after all the shredding? <laughs> my hand, Well, my hands are, are having a bit of a hard time right now anyway, but um, they're okay. Shredding's not too bad for them. Um, right now, it's more gripping. And mm. that, you know, I'm having trouble with thinking about you when I was doing it. I wish there were things that were, oh, I'm dumb. I do. I have a blade that goes in my food processor that shreds cheese. And I should have been doing that. <laughs> I was going to ask you if you could do it in a food processor. And then I was just like, well, I'll just ask her later. <laughs> yes. So yeah. I can. We could have. Yeah. We definitely could have done that. Oh my God. This is so beautiful. Oh, Pod, did you get trapped on the wrong side of the fence, buddy? Oh, no. <laughs> he looks a little sad, but not so. He didn't come running over as soon as he saw me. So he thought, yeah, he's sure. not that upset. <laughs> he's a pretty go with the flow rabbit. <laughs> okay, three minutes. And then we have to let it cool for 15. Yeah. Okay. Now I've got a little bit of fat separation on this batch. I'll put some pictures of that when I get it out of the oven. Okay. I also did, just did a very naughty thing where I cut the oven open and then took a video of my food with the oven door open. You mean naughty for the oven temp? Yeah. <laughs> Luckily for something like this, not really going to affect it that much. Once it gets up there, actually, maybe I should pull it out now if it's starting to separate. I think I might pull mine too just because the top's so brown. I mean, it's not burnt, but I don't really think I need to push it. Fully bubbling like through the whole thing, right? Oh my God. Yeah. It's been like that for a while. <laughs> then, yeah. I think you're good. So, yeah. But I mean, some oil separation is probably not completely unexpected in this situation. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there you go. There you go. James and I are like nervous. We're not going to be able to like not eat the whole thing. I mean, we <laughs> won't, but like, we're both like, oh my God, we have to really be careful. Yeah. You mean like, in one sitting, right? That's yeah, 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 yeah. In one sitting. Tonight. <laughs> That's understandable. Yeah. <laughs> Let's say it serves eight people. So maybe you just want to be like, this is for eight people. <laughs> Let's not eat more than half. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you eat enough for four people, that's fine. That's perfect. There's protein. Actually, I haven't eaten today. Not a good thing, but this is my only meal. Oh, then you can totally eat a half a pound of this. And no, no, problem. <laughs> totally. That's the terrible influence. <laughs> Mine looks amazing. How long did that take us? Two hours and 15 minutes, but yeah. we took some breaks. Yeah. And meandered off the path a bit. So, yeah, <laughs> per use.
usual. I'm getting my ruffle out. Oh, yeah. Oh, you talked about alternate toppings. Was that just the fried shallots or were there other ideas you had? Well, so then I also have shred, uh, shredding a little of black truffle in, onto it. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, oh, uh, bacon or macon topping. Mm. I have the macon on top of this and bake it in the oven. I was like, there was something I was going to put on like a third of this to see what it would be like. And I forgot. So like, oh, that would be good. So like if you did some like chopped up. I was wondering how it would be if you put like some thinly sliced tomatoes on right at the very end. Oh, I like that. I like that idea. I don't know if it would mess up the breadcrumbs, but I just imagine that flavor would be really good with a little bit of tomato. Like you could also just, I mean, yeah, really anything because with this, supposedly you can basically use any cheese to make this cheese sauce. I was going to say, has it been 15 minutes? Can I scoop out a scoop yet? (laughs) <laughs> it's only been five on my side. Damn it. <laughs> it's only been five. Me too. <laughs> I thought so, but I wasn't sure. <laughs> you could do even like a pasta, a blue cheese pasta bake with like mm. walnut and sliced grapes on top or something, you know, very. Buffalo sauce. <laughs> Buffalo sauce. Yeah. I mean, like <laughs> any- lots of things anything cut up some peppers and put them on top olives i mean come on you could kind of do a carbonara style bake too Mm. some people were saying that they didn't have quite the same success with other types of cheese so who knows who knows well i love sharp cheddar and gruyere so it wasn't i didn't even want to consider switching them out for something else (laughs) I might want to try some Gouda at some point, but so I think my batch this time did separate a little bit more. I'll be interested to see what yours looks like. Mm-hmm. Hmm. My first version was much more successful, I think. Yeah. I don't know. I I only tasted a single noodle, so not mm-hmm. hasn't sat for fifteen minutes yet. Well, should we call it good and take some pictures? Take some pictures and. Mm-hmm. Go eat, eat ourselves. Yes, I did just taste it. So okay, it's very time to eat. <laughs> uh, my last batch, I think, turned out a a little bit better. I think tasting it now, I could have a little more salt filling. I see, but I do think I I, I it split on me just slightly. Bummer. So, yeah, I may have to revive my title for this from kick ass mac and cheese to something else tricky ass mac and cheese make it sound like it's so easy and i will also have to try doing it with a whisk yeah Mm, that's really good okay chewing 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 Chewing. um let us know what you think if you make it do you use an immersion blender do you use a whisk how does it turn out what do you think about cheese types and all that stuff we love to hear it and uh yeah thank you for joining us for another lovely episode of high gluttony and uh, we have a website. Most most places do these days, but we have a website. <laughs> we have information on the World Wide Web. On the World Wide Web. Instagram, Facebook. You can email us at highgluttony at highgluttony.com. And that's all I can think of for right now. Yeah. Well, yeah. Enjoy this mac and cheese right in time for the winter solstice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, enjoy. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Bye.